In this video, we're going to create a flickering light as an indication that there's objects for the player. And as a player walk by, and then we'll have the instruction to show up, and he can press down a key to pick up the objects. And as the player walk out, we'll show the second indication light, so our player know where to go. So now we'll go to game object and create a point light. Okay, and. We're gonna, as you can see, the range is big, and uh, we're going to decrease it, so it only covers the patio here. And you may turn on the directional light we have by default, so we can see the model. Okay, so for this light, I'm going to move it closer to here. We got a lighting bubble here. Okay, let's get closer, and... Maybe we can increase the intensity a little bit, about 2. Okay. And then I'm going to rename it Patio Light 1. Right? And I'm going to hide the direction light, so we don't need that anymore. And for this light, I'm going to apply a script. So here I'm going to drop in the flickering light script. Okay. And apply it onto the light we have here. So I'm going to come here and add a component um, flickering light. So here, as you can see, for this script, uh, it gave us two values we can assign. So basically, we're going to flicker, uh, flickering the light. Uh, so we can set the minimum uh, wait time and the max wait time. So we're going to randomize the time. So here for the minimum time, I'm going to do point, uh, 0.01. Max wait time, I'm going to do point 0.1. Okay. Uh, let's test and take a look how it looks. As you can see, when we start the game, there's the light is fully green. Okay. However, right now it's a little bit too intense. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to select this light and right click. Actually, I'm going to press F key to just focus on it. And I'm going to duplicate it. And for the duplication, I'm going to denote this script. Okay. So for this duplicate light, I'm going to say uh, maybe I'll just say cover, okay, and then place the first light as the child object as the cover light, okay. So now we only have the script on the child object. So this light is going to flicker, and this light it will stay there. So for this one, we can uh, make intensity keep the intensity to two, but the one that is flickering, we can lower the intensity to maybe point seven. Okay, so now let's take a look how it looks. Right, so now we have this uh, light as an indication that um, there's a something here and we will need to walk to here. Okay, and also there's always a light staying there. Uh, the other light, which has no intensity, is a funny green, so we don't feel it's too much. Right, now it looks much better. So here's the script. Um, in the beginning, we declare two um, float objects. So for the float, you can input the number here. So that's the number we have typed in, right? And as the game start, so uh, you will get the component from the light. So the component name is light. So which is this one. So you're going to get this component, okay? And you're going to start a coroutine. So for curl team, basically if you want to have a function like a wait uh, for a specific time and then have an event to happen, so you can use this function. So you're gonna wait for a second. So how many time you want to wait is here. So you're going to random, uh, randomize uh, a range of time between the minimum time and the maximum time. So that is the 0 0.01 second to 0 0.1 second. So you're going to randomize a time in between this time, okay? And you're going to randomize that, and after that time, you're going to change the status of the light from 
uh, enabled to disabled. So here, as you can see, enabled, and then if you put this quote at here, so it means invert the value, so it will be disabled. So you're gonna switch between enabled and disabled. Okay, wait for a specific time and enable, wait for a specific time and disable, and then go again, go again. So that's how it works. So now I want to go to the asset store and import this asset. So you can find the download link on Blackboard. Then here in Unity, you're going to go to Window and Package Manager, and if it doesn't refresh, just go again. Package Manager, My Assets, and you should see... Oh, here. So next page. Here we go. So we're going to download. So now let's go to this folder and under prefabs, let's drop in a table in front of the apartment. As you can see, the scale is too big. So we can lower it down to about 20 for X, Y, Z. And you can temporarily turn on the directional light so you can see where the table is. So I want to place the table in front of uh, the door. And as we start the game, um, I don't want the player to be able to control the flashlight and we'll put a flashlight on the table and after our player pick it up and then our player will be able to use it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the model, the flashlight model. Hit Command D to make a duplication and, um, and parent it to the table. Okay, so here you can zero out its value on position and then place it on top of the table. And then um, I can unparent it, so drop it down to here. So here we go. We're gonna leave this uh, flashlight on top. Okay, on top of the table. And here we're going to rename it to flashlight model um, on table. Right? And then on the table, I'm also going to place the lantern. So I'm going to drop it here. Um, I can temporarily parent it to the flashlight. And by zero out its position, so I'm going to bring it here. And then unparent it. And I'm going to place it on top of the desk, uh, the table, and scale it down a little bit. Here we go. All right, and press F key to focus on these objects. And go to game object, and I'm going to create an empty. So for here, I'm going to say uh, lights on table. Uh, so basically, this will be a group, and I'm going to put the flashlight and uh, lantern inside of this group. Alright, uh, so now basically I want the player to walk to here and then on the screen it's going to show a instruction that you can press the key to pick up these lights. So we're going to go to the tool menu, game object and uh, UI and text. And for the text, here I'm going to rename it to instruction. Uh, one because later on we're going to have more instructions so for the first instruction add a text box here i'm going to say press um, e to pick up okay and uh, you can change the font style if you want and uh, for the font size i will do 20 and for the color i will pick up white color because our uh, environment lighting is dark okay so that's the instruction uh, that's what I'm going to show on the screen so you can select the instruction and press F key on the screen so here here is it so this is what I'm going to show on the screen so if it is not in the center you can just move it and place it in the center okay uh, so that is the text and 
Then I'm going to create a trigger right here. So whenever the player enters the trigger, it's going to show the instruction. So I'm going to go to game object and three object a cube, and I'll rename it to trigger um, pick up object. So I know what this trigger is for, and you can make it bigger, but don't do too much. So just want to make sure it only covers this table area like this and then make it bigger uh, uh, higher and then I'm going to check on is trigger for box collider and then turn off the mesh rendering okay so let me double check so now we have our trigger we have our text uh, the instruction and also have the lights on the table and also the light on our character so now you can uh, import the press key pickup object script I provided. Okay, and you're going to go to the trigger, and here you're going to apply it. And on this script, we'll have four objects you can apply. So first, the instruction will be the instruction um, for the player to press the key to pick up the objects, and this trigger will be the trigger itself. And object on ground will be here all the lights on the table okay and object on hand basically will be here the lights on the character's hand so that includes the control the light controller you know this script and also all the flashlights under it okay and also we're going to select the first person controller and you're going to assign a tag for it so we're going to tag it as player and let's test the play So as we start the game, if I press 1, 2, 3, 4, I'm now able to create, uh, control the lights as I have done before. Right? So now if I walk closer to here, uh, you can see that instruction is on the page. If I walk out, then the instruction disappeared. Walk back, it will show up again. And then if I press E, um, the, the lights will disappear and now I will be able to use one, two, three, four to control the different lights. Alright, so let's take a look at this script and see how it works. So this is a script. Um, so here we declare four objects, uh, which is the instruction, the trigger, and object on ground, and object on hand. And also we created a boolean. So basically for boolean, is for status check. So here you can see the uh, the loads. Uh, basically, it has two status, true or false. Okay. Um, so by default, we set it as a false. Okay. And as we start the game, uh, we want the instruction to be deactivated. So we will not be able to see any of the instruction on screen. And the trigger, uh, this trigger will set as true, set active. Uh, and object on ground, we want to enable it, and object on hand, we want to disable it. So that is the controller. So we will not be able to control any of the lights in the beginning. Okay. And as we enter this trigger, and if the object enter this trigger tagged as player, okay, and then the instruction will be showing on screen. And also the action will uh, change it to true status. Okay, the reason why I uh, assign a if statement here, uh, attack a player, is because later on we're going to have zombie character, enemy character. So we don't want any object enter this trigger to be able to activate the trigger. Okay, and if our player walk out on trigger exit, if he walk out, the instruction will disappear and also the action will set as false. Okay, so if the player stay in the trigger, action will be true. So if you press down a key, which is a e, a e key, and if the action is true, so if your player is inside of the trigger, so both these condition met, and then it's going to process this function. So instruction will be deactivated, and object on ground will be destroyed, okay, and object on hand will be activated. So now we should be able to control the lights and it will deactivate this trigger because we don't want it to repeat trigger uh, this thing to happen. And it will reset the action back to false, which is the default setting. 
So this is how the script works. All right. So now, as the player picked up the flashlights, I want the screen to show an instruction that reminds the player you can press one, two, three, four to toggle these lights on. Okay. Um, so here in the canvas, um, I'm going to go to game object and create another text. So this one I'm going to say instruction two. And for the instruction here, um, for the text, I'm going to name it to. Uh, I'm going to change the text to press one, two, three. And four to toggle the flashlight. Okay. Um, and for the font size, I'm gonna do twenty. I believe the first one is twenty. Yes. Okay. And uh, the font color will be the white color. And then I can select the uh, instruction. Press F key. So here is it. Um, so let me temporarily hide the first one so we can focus on this one. Um, right now here is cut off, so you can use this tool and then just to change the scale to show the whole thing. And here I'm going to see flashlights because there's a more. Okay. Right, and then turn the first one back on. And let's go back to here. And also, when the player pick up lights, we can play the pick up uh, pick up object sound. So here we can uh, create an empty object. So here I can see pick up uh, light. Okay, so we know this is a sound object. And here for add component, I'm going to add a audio source. Okay, um, and then go to the assets, and here I'm going to create a uh, new folder. One uh, sound effects. And here, Going to drop in the pickup flashlight sound, and then select this uh, sound um, object, and I'm going to drop in this clip here. Here for the settings, check off play on wake and check off loop, and then I want to create a empty object, and here I'm going to see trigger turn off. Um, patio light, and on this object, I'm going to add box collider. Okay, so here is it, and I'm going to change its uh, position. So I'm going to move it to here. And change it along the z-axis. And then we can make it longer uh, and taller. Okay. And then um, I'm going to click on here. Click on here and copy the component. And click here again and paste the component as new so you're going to uh, duplicate this object so we can move it along not here move it along the x-axis so we're going to place it on this side All right and then I'm going to Copy this component and then paste as a new. And then at here, I'm going to 
move it to the center. But I'm going to change the shape. Okay. And bring it to the front. All right. So basically, this trainer is going to surround this whole area. Okay. And whenever our player walk into this trigger, I want uh, the pattern light to turn, to turn off. All right. So now let's save this script and go back to our um, press key pick up object script. So here we go. So now we want to add a few objects. Okay, because in the beginning, I don't want this trigger to show up. Otherwise, uh, when we pick up the lights, before we pick up lights, we walk into the trigger, the P2 lights going to turn off. So we don't want that to happen. Okay, so here we're going to see public game object and here we can see next trigger so next trigger will be this one okay so in the beginning um, the next trigger will be a fourth Okay, and then once we press the key down here, the next trigger set active will be true, so it's going to show up. And also, when we enter this trigger, I want this sound, uh, the pickup sound, to play. Okay, and instruction to show. Uh, the second instruction. So here I'm going to go back to the script. So I'm going to duplicate this one so I'm gonna say next instruction okay so in the beginning the next instruction is deactivated okay and as uh, I press down the key and uh, if you are in the trigger so the next um, instruction will be true So we're going to add a public um, a audio source. Here we go. Pick up lights sound. Okay, and then I'm gonna copy this part. And whenever you are in the trigger and you press down E K, so this sound is going to play. Okay, so save it, and then let's see, we get everything. Okay, if you select this uh, trigger pickup object, uh, you should see that the three other objects we declare, declared is here. So the next trigger will be the trigger turn off patio light, right? And the next instruction will be instruction two, and pick up light sound will be here so as you can see now in the beginning uh, here the trigger doesn't exist all right and then as I pick it up okay the second instruction is showing and now I'm not able to walk out because I have created another trigger and I haven't set it as a trigger okay so everything is working all right, so now let's select this trigger that I'm going to turn off the Peter light and we're going to go to its box collider and make sure to check all these uh, three box collider as trigger. Check this out, otherwise you will not be able to walk into it. All right, and um, okay, and uh, for this one, I'm going to duplicate and rename the duplication to night 2 okay and light 2 and I'm gonna move the second light to another building across the street maybe here okay so 
So I just want to make sure that our player will be able to see it from here. Yep. So that distance we can see it. So this will be the second pillow light. So in the beginning it's turned off. Okay, and we're going to trigger it to turn on when we enter this trigger. Okay, so what I'm going to do is um, drop in this uh, trigger pillow light script to here. And then you're going to select this uh, trigger. Okay, this trigger. And I'm going to add this uh, script. So this is a trigger pillow light. Okay. And here are the four objects we're going to apply. So first is the instruction. So basically the instruction will be the second one because after we picked up the lights at here and at that point, we will have the second instruction on screen, right? So this will be the second instruction. This trigger is the trigger itself. Okay. And the pedal light will be the first light and the next light will be the second light all right as you have the object in place and we can test and in the beginning as you can see the second light is not on and the first light is on and as we come here and press e we'll have the sound and this is the second instruction and as we walk into this trigger the instruction will turn off, the light will be off, and then we'll be able to see the next light. And here's how the script looks. It's very simple. So basically we declare four objects, right? And in the beginning, um, the next pillow light, the second pillow light is uh, false, is deactivated, and all other three objects are activated, right? And when a object tagged as player enter this trigger, uh, you're going to turn the next pillow light on and set all of the other three objects false.